guys. Today we're gonna to be calculating height using long bones and regression formulas. So get your hand out. If you don't already have one, print one from the description of the video. Grab a calculator. If you have some long bones handy, you could get those out. But if not, you can use the ones I'm gonna share with you. And let's get started. The first step to determining height from long bone is to figure out what kind of bone you're looking at. And so on the handout, I have some pictures of different kinds of bones, and we're gonna focus on the first one. And the distinguishing feature of this bone is really the fact that it is really wide on one end, but kind of flat. So think about what bone that might be. And that is a tibia. The next step is to measure the length of that bone. Take a look at the photo showing how a tibia is actually usually measured. It's usually measured using something called calipers, though in the classroom, in our next lesson, we're just going to measure it as best we can using measuring tape or a string and a ruler. But let's imagine that our victim has had their tibia measured and that tibia is 330 millimeters long. It can be measured in lots of different units. It could be inches, centimeters, millimeters, but we're gonna start with a measurement in millimeters. Then we have to figure out the sex and ethnicity the best we can of our victim. Sometimes if you only have a long bone, you might not be able to tell very well, especially the ethnicity. Um, most forensic anthropologists can tell sex just from the feel of the bones, even if it's a long bone. But let's imagine that we have an intact skeleton and this person is a clear representation of a Caucasian female. You might wonder why we need to know the ethnicity and the gender to determine height. And the answer is that there is a correlation, especially with gender, uh, to the length of each long bone and how height can be determined. But ethnicity does play some role, so if you know ethnicity, that can be helpful as well. Then we have to figure out the regression formula. So for the regression formula, I am using a table from Sherlock Bones. Wards has a really cool kit called Sherlock Bones, and they have a table for the tibia. I know that I have a female, so I'm going to go ahead and circle female. And I know that the female is European, so I'll circle that. And from the fact that I have a female and the female is European, this is my regression formula. Now I'm going to copy the regression formula onto my handout. So it's going to be 2.90 times the maximum length of the tibia plus 61.53. But it's also important to me to know the confidence interval because this tells us our range of error. So whatever my final answer is, I'm going to do plus or minus 3.66. In the second box, I'll fill in my values. So 2.90 was given. The maximum length of the tibia we're going to record in centimeters. So I have to convert my millimeters into centimeters. Since it was 330 millimeters, I'll just divide by 10 and it will be 33 centimeters. Then I'm gonna add plus 61.53. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my calculator. You don't do anything with the interval yet. So 2.9, times 33, and then I'm going to add 61.53. So the final answer is 157.23. I'm just gonna keep three digits though, um, because my initial number only had three digits. So I'm gonna round that to 150 centimeters, or I'm sorry, 157, that would be some crazy rounding, centimeters. 
And this is when I add my intervals. So that's going to be plus or minus 3.66. So what that means is I can be fairly confident that my person was this height plus or minus 3.67. Here is my initial answer that I started with. I'm going to subtract 3.66. And the low end of my range is 153.57. So I'll just make that 153.5 centimeters. Ignore that. That was a mistake. Now I want to know the high end of my range. So I get back to my original number, 157.23, and then I'm going to add 3.66. And that comes out to 160.89. So this person was somewhere between 153.5 and 160.9 centimeters in height. Now, for those of us who are American, we don't really speak centimeters when it comes to height, but I did a little conversion and that works out to about five foot zero to five foot seven inches tall. So you can see there's still quite a range, but you would know for certain, you could rule out certain people. So for instance, I'm five foot nine. And if they found that bone, it's not going to belong to me because five foot nine is not within the acceptable possible range of heights for that person. Here is the next bone that we're going to look at. This one, the identifying feature is really this ball up on this end. It's less prominent than this one, and that tells me that this is a humerus, the upper arm of the bone. And imagine that I have measured this humerus, and I have found it to be 11.5 inches in length. So now I'm going to convert 11.5 inches to centimeters. Okay, I did that for us and I found that it's 29 centimeters in length. Okay, we're going to imagine that this bone came from an Asian male. Originally I was doing European, but why would we do two Europeans in a row? So we're going to do an Asian male and now we need to find the right regression formulas. So I have this table of regression formulas. We know we're dealing with a male, and this time we know the male is Asian. So this is the regression formula that we're going to transfer to our sheet. 2.68 times the maximum length of the humerus. Plus 83.19. And I also need to write down the confidence interval. So this can be plus or minus 4.16 centimeters. Now this time, I'm not going to solve it for you. So I've shown you the steps. You can just straight up put 29 in because we don't have to convert from millimeters to centimeters. So go ahead and pause the video, make your calculations, and see what range you come up with in centimeters. I will go through the answer with you, but if you're my student, you have to show the work to get to the answer. So the answer alone is just to see if you're on the right track. I came up with this person being somewhere between 157 and 165 centimeters in height. And when I converted 165 to inches by dividing by 2.54, I found that he was at most 5 foot 5 inches tall. So this is a this is a relatively shorter male. Okay, let's go to that final bone, which is pretty distinctive because of the ball at the end that fits into your hip joint. So that particular bone is a femur. And this time we're gonna imagine that it is 500 millimeters in length. And this bone belongs to an African male. Excuse my dog. So for this final round, I'm not going to give you the regression formula. You need to look, decide if we're using the top or the bottom, and whichever one 
decide which formula and which confidence interval, pause if necessary, and write down the appropriate formula. You also need to keep in mind that I started you off in millimeters this time, so you will need to divide by 10 to convert to centimeters, and then find the final height for this person. Okay, if for that final bone you found that your victim had a height of about 177 centimeters, which works out to about 5 foot 10, then you did it correctly. On our next lesson, we will be learning how to take our own long bones and estimate our height to see which regression formula works best. Is it the humerus, the radius, is it the tibia? Um, so I hope this helped you understand how to use regression formulas to calculate height. They're super useful in forensic anthropology and it's a fun chance to do some math and some measurements too. Have a good one.